Hello, my name is John Coonrod with Rogers Corporation and I am a technical marketing manager. Today I'm going to be talking to you about glass weave effect and specifically how the glass weave effect can impact RF performance at millimeter wave frequencies. Now this is an issue, the glass weave effect, that has been around for a number of years actually and the high speed digital industry from my perspective uh, really were the initial uh, people that were looking into the glass weave effects and have done a lot of studies on it, usually in terms of time domain and issues related to digital. Uh, however, as there's more and more applications going to higher frequencies and using millimeter wave frequencies, and along with that, the associated shorter wavelengths, there are more issues in the RF industry now with the glass weave effect, and now it's being studied much more carefully. So what I plan on giving uh, for information today on this topic is shown here in the agenda. Uh, first off, I'll go through a basic introduction of uh, woven glass fabrics. And then after that, I'll talk about some DK differences due to the glass fabric. And then finally, the last two bullets I'll spend more time on. And I'll talk about the circuit glass orientation and how that can impact the effective dielectric constant of the circuit. And then finally, I'll uh, give some data, share some data, and then uh, have some discussion around that data on several studies that we've done with the glass weave effect. So to start as a quick introduction, uh, the woven glass fabric or the fiberglass that's used in the printed circuit board industry, it's typically used as mechanical support for the laminate. And there are several benefits to the uh, woven glass layer. Uh, and there's also some drawbacks, which is true with just about anything in engineering. Everything has pros and cons. So the woven glass is helpful for uh, supporting the structure mechanically better for the laminate and also having the laminate um, have a little bit better dimensional stability, more consistent dimensional stability, things like that. But the drawback can be uh, having DK differences due to the glass fabric itself. So the glass fabric that's normally used for the printed circuit board industry is e-glass. There are other types of glass used, uh, but that's the most common one. And the uh, dielectric constant or DK or relative permittivity or epsilon sub R, I typically call it DK. The DK for the e-glass is typically around six. And then as a few very general statements, um, there are different types of woven glass fabrics used. There are open weave glass, there is expanded weave glass and also spread glass. Along with that, there's also the glass tiles are considered balanced or unbalanced. And the balanced or unbalanced is really related to uh, glass density on the different axes of the glass fabric itself. So if there's the same amount of glass on the X axis as compared to the Y axis, that's considered balanced. If the glass density is different on the X axis compared to the Y axis, that's considered unbalanced. Shown here are three different styles of glass fabric used to reinforce laminates. And uh, the first two on top, 106 glass and 1080 glass are considered open weave glass. And that's because you have bundles of glass fiber and in between these bundles are open areas. So there are openings between these fiber glass bundles. The 106 glass is considered balanced. The 1080 glass is considered unbalanced. The 1078 glass on the bottom is considered balanced and a spread glass and a spread glass does not have openings between the bundles or what little openings are there. They're extremely small, usually less than a mil. Uh, so it's acting more like a uniform plane of glass. And that's the difference of some of these basic glass styles that are used for thin laminates. So these three glass styles are very thin glass styles and very often found in thin laminates. And of course, thin laminates are typically used at millimeter wave frequencies. Now, zooming in a little bit closer to one of these open weave glass and uh, talking about the DK difference. If the formulation of the laminate is uh, intended to have an overall DK of 3.0 and it is glass reinforced, the glass itself is about a DK of six which means the resin system must be, must be uh, much lower than that. So the resin system is usually around 2.1 to 2.5, and that depends on the glass to resin ratio and other things. But anyway, the, the main point is the glass is a much higher decay than the resin system. 
So the top view, I'm looking straight down this glass that I took a picture of at higher magnification. And you can imagine in circuit form, you would have copper top and bottom, which is not shown. And also you can imagine there's a resin system and I'm also not showing that. So we can just assume the resin system is clear. And if you were able to do a very discrete measurement for dielectric constant at the tips of each one of the arrows I'm pointing uh, in this picture, what you'd find is the blue arrows are pointing to areas that I'm calling glass knuckles. And in these areas, you have glass bundles that intersect each other. So you really have two layers of glass. So from a layer scheme from top down, you have a clear resin on top. You have one layer of glass for a, uh, a glass bundle. You have another layer of glass below that as another glass bundle. It's intersecting going the opposite direction. And then below that, you have another layer of resin. So you have resin, two layers of glass and resin for where the blue arrows are pointing. Where the yellow arrows are pointing, you have just one layer of glass because that's the glass bundle area. Now you have resin on top, glass bundle, resin on the bottom, and that's gonna be a lower decay than where the blue arrows are pointing because you have less glass and the glass is the higher decay. And then of course the lowest decay is going to be where the green arrows are pointing and that's in the open areas where there is no glass. So in just a small area and looking at DK differences, you can see pretty remarkable differences of dielectric constant in very small areas due to this glass difference and how the glass reinforced the laminate. So on the left is a top view and on the right is a cross-sectional view. The top view on the left is uh, showing a microstrip circuit, actually two signal planes, and these two signal conductors are not considered to be coupled. They're considered two different circuits really. Ground plane would be below on the bottom, which is not shown, and the gray is the glass weave uh, pattern. And first off, the uh, conductor shown on the left, that would actually have a higher overall dielectric constant as compared to the conductor on the right. And that's because the conductor on the left is aligned to the glass weave pattern in such a way that it's over two layers of glass in some cases and one layer of glass in another. So it's really over a knuckle bundle orientation as I would call it. So from the bottom of this top view picture going up, you would have the conductor, it's aligned over a bundle of glass, the knuckle, bundle, knuckle, bundle, knuckle, bundle. And the overall effect for that signal conductor would be a higher effective dielectric constant than the neighboring conductor to the right that is aligned to the glass weave pattern over an area of an open area with no glass and then an area of bundle, one layer of glass, an open bundle, open bundle. So I call that the bundle open orientation. That same type of concept can be shown to the right in a cross-sectional view. And then moving on, uh, there's two different ways, actually there's multiple ways to think about how the glass weave pattern can interact with the circuit. Uh, however, these are the two most common. And on the left is the local trace environment and on the right is the periodic decay variation. And the local trace environment, we already talked about some, and that is uh, when you have a signal conductor that's aligned to the knuckle bundle area, that is going to perceive a higher uh, dielectric constant overall as compared to a neighboring circuit with a signal conductor over the bundle open area that's going to have a lower dielectric constant. Now to the right of that is the periodic decay variation and personally from going through a lot of studies and experiments I think this periodic decay variation is the real issue and uh, the local trace environment definitely can be an issue too but I think most of the glass weave effect issues that I run into is probably related to the periodic decay variation. Unfortunately, it's very hard to do an experiment and verify this, but really what the idea is here, um, I'm showing the glass weave as a perfect grid and a signal conductor on an angle in respect to this glass weave. And in one area I have pointed to there is high decay, the glass, um, the, the conductor is aligned to the glass such that the conductor is open over areas of bundle, knuckle, bundle, knuckle, bundle, knuckle. So it's a higher decay region. And then as you move up farther, you get to an area of the circle that says low decay. Now you're in an area where the conductor is over the glass in such a way that it's open bundle, open bundle, open bundle. So it's a lower decay. So what you get is a zipper effect for this conductor along the length of the conductor. That's high decay, low decay, high decay, low decay. And at millimeter wave frequencies with short wavelengths, this decay variation can be detected and it can be a, uh, a pretty significant issue. 
So uh, talking a little bit more about uh, different configurations and orientations of the circuit to the glass. Here I'm showing uh, a cross-sectional view of a circuit on the top circuit anyway. It's really just a uh, thin laminate, a microstrip circuit. And again, these signal conductors are far enough apart to be considered two individual circuits. They are not coupled. And the signal on the left is over the knuckle bunda area where you have two layers of glass in some cases. And if you grind down farther, you'd just be over one layer of glass. And if you grind down farther in the cross section over two layers, anyway, you get the idea. And then on the right, that signal conductor would be over an area that would be considered bundle open, bundle open. Now, the cross-sectional view below that is shown another laminate that actually has two layers of glass. And what happens typically is the glass weave effect is more significant when you have just one layer of glass and it's open weave glass. But if it's two layers of glass and they are both open weave, you actually get an averaging effect where these glass uh, layers, as they are laminated together to make the laminate, they will not automatically align. In fact, they normally want to not align. And because of that, you get an averaging effect and the glass weave effect is much less significant when you have a laminate with more than one layer of open weave glass. Another thing to consider is filler. So what I'm showing again on the top picture is our example circuit I've been showing for the last few slides and it's considered unfilled. So it's just resin and glass only. And then below that is the same type of laminate except now it's resin, glass, and it has ceramic particles. So laminates with ceramic filler, the ceramic itself has a different decay than the decay of the glass and different than the resin system. So the ceramic is actually a higher decay than the resin system and lower than the glass and the ceramic particles act like an intermediary uh, to kind of smooth out the glass weave effect. So for open weave glass and using um, a very highly ceramic filled laminate, the ceramic filler actually minimizes, almost eliminates the uh, glass weave effect. And we'll see that in some of the data that I'll show a little bit later. So uh, back on to the circuit glass uh, uh, weave orientation and uh, some of the studies we did, and I'm gonna show you some data from these studies. Uh, we tried to do several different things. One, we tried to look at the periodic DK trace environment, but unfortunately that's really difficult to uh, verify accurately. But the local trace environment shown on the left, that's something we could very accurately uh, verify and actually get circuits that oriented to the glass exactly as we have shown here. So what we did is we did a very large study and we made laminates that were thin, four mils thick and only with one layer of glass. And the resin system was a pure resin system, no filler. So it was PTFE and glass only. And it was a very thin laminate, four mils thick. So it, that exaggerates the effects between the signal plane and the ground plane with the glass in between there. And what we did was we inspected a lot of circuits and we uh, chose circuits that had a very precise orientation between the signal conductor and the glass. And the two orientations we were looking for were the knuckle bundle orientation and the bundle open orientation. And then we made comparisons by measuring uh, circuits with these different orientations and a lot of different uh, kinds of measurements, which I'll show in just a few slides. Uh, also, as part of the study, we did this with multiple different laminates that used different glass styles. So we had laminates that were just PTFE and glass only. So it's just pure resin and glass only, but we use different glass styles looking for differences in the glass weave effect. So here's a summary of one of these studies and uh, what the table information is showing is differences between the circuits that were oriented to the knuckle bundle orientation and circuits oriented to the bundle or open orientation when using the same laminate. And in this case, we actually the study had four different laminates in it. Here are the table information that I'm showing just shows three of these laminates and I'll get to the fourth one later. So three of these laminates used a glass that was open weave, spread weave, and open weave. The glass styles shown on the left are 106, 1078, and 1080. The description of the glass is the next column over under type. And then some of the measurements that we've taken are shown here. Uh, we did take measurements for impedance and uh, rise time and different things like that. That's not shown. I do have the information if anyone's interested. 
but the most accurate information is actually the far right column of phase angle. And specifically, I did this at 77 gigahertz because we have several customers using our materials at 77 gigahertz for automotive radar and very concerned about phase consistency. So really what this table of information is showing is the difference between the circuit with the knuckle bundle orientation and the exact same circuit, same material, same everything, except the circuit was oriented to the bundle open orientation. And at 77 gigahertz for the 106 glass on the first row, I saw a phase angle difference between these circuits of 100 degrees. 100 degrees phase angle difference at 77 gigahertz is considered significant, especially for automotive radar. And that difference is really the difference between the exact same circuit, same material, same everything, except the circuit uh, was aligned to the knuckle bundle and another circuit was aligned to the bundle open. And that is the phase angle difference I see between those two circuits. Now the next row down is the 1078 glass. So it's the exact same laminate except a different glass. And this is 1078 or spread glass. And now you can see the difference for phase angle is significantly improved. So there's very little difference actually for phase angle at 77 gigahertz between the circuits of the different circuit glass orientation. And then finally, the worst case scenario was the 1080 glass last row. That's open weave glass and it is unbalanced. So there's different amount of glass on one axis versus the other. And at 77 gigahertz, we see a very significant number of 149 degrees phase angle difference. And that is considered to be a pretty big deal with automotive radar applications. Now the table of information below that is just the exact same information as above, except what we did was use the information on the top table to extract the dielectric constant of the material. So what we found was the 106 glass, we saw a dielectric constant difference due to how these circuits behaved. Uh, with the knuckle bundle orientation compared to the bundle open orientation, we saw a decay difference of 0 0.09 with the 106 glass, with the spread glass 0 0.02, and then with the open weave unbalanced 1080 glass 0.14. Now moving on, looking at the 1080 glass in more detail, and now looking at 1080 glass of an unfilled laminate compared to filled laminate, that's a little bit more interesting. So far, the data I've shown you on the 1080 glass was actually an unfilled laminate. It was PTFE and glass only. However, the other laminate that I want to compare it to is the 4 mil 4835 low pro laminate, and that is also using 1080 glass but it has a very highly ceramic filled, uh, it is a highly ceramic filled laminate. So there's a lot of ceramic particles in this laminate. And in theory, we've always kind of thought that the ceramic particles would kind of uh, uh, be an intermediary between the decay of the glass and decay of the resin system to kind of smooth out that uh, effect to really minimize the glass weave effect. And that's really why we did the study. And sure enough, that's exactly what the data showed. So the first row of information is really the same information I showed uh, two slides back. And that's the pure resin uh, system with 1080 glass. That's the PTFE and 1080 glass, 77 gigahertz. I get a phase angle of 149 degrees. And that same configuration with highly filled ceramic, that is a 4835 low pro laminate with 1080 glass. And here you can see the phase angles even better than our previous study with the, the spread weave, this is an open weave glass, obviously, and unbalanced, the 1080 glasses. And we have very little glass weave effect in this case at 77 gigahertz, so only 10 degrees difference in phase angle. Again, the table of information below is the same uh, format as shown a couple of slides back, where this is really just the extracted dielectric constant differences based on the data on the top table of information. So that's all I have for now on this topic, and I invite you to become a member of our technology support hub. Uh, this is a website we're very proud of. We have a lot of good information here, and as a member, you have access to calculators, free software, some of the software you can download. You also have access to the Raj mobile apps, and you have technical papers, video library, and you have the ability to contact an engineer in your region. So that's all I have for now, and I want to thank you for your attention, and have a good day.